we're here with Michael Menninger, three-time All-American Sailor of the Year, match racing and team racing world champion, and trimmer on New York Yacht Club American Magic Challenger of the 37th America's Cup. Michael, a day in which plans didn't go as expected. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, there was a bit of an issue on Magic, the second boat to dock out today. They had um, a bit of an issue with the, the manifold, I think. So they had a bit of an oil leakage and um, I think they got a short sail in, but, but not a very long sail. And the plan of the day was to get um, both boats together at one point and do a little bit of racing and a little bit of lineups. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't get to do that today and Magic had to go in um, pretty early. But um, so we had to kind of pivot and make, uh, make a day of it for one boat on America today. And it ended up being a really good day. As you guys saw, we had um, probably like 16 to 20, 23 knots of wind speed um, in pretty flat water. So it was, a, it was just a really nice day to be sailing in Barcelona. And um, collectively for us, we, we got through some testing on our own. So it's good. When sailing on, on Port Tuck and talking out the starboard side foil, um, what are you specifically looking for to bring out from that foil? Because it looks like it's it's very unstable when it gets very windy and also it's very hard to come out on the tacks when you tack from starboard into port. So what's the main goal with this with this foil? Yeah, that's that's our smallest hydrofoil. Um, and so it's just it's just a bit temperamental when, when it breaches, when it comes out of the water. So you know, a challenge, a challenge for us is just to stay kind of connected, locked in with that foil. And, and there's a few different ways to do it. You can kind of do it with can, you can do it with T-Sync. Um, you can do it kind of through various different ways. And, and you can also try to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more forgiving on the aero side as well. So we kind of try a little bit of all those things to try to make it as forgiving as possible, but it's still um, probably one of our more challenging foils to sail on. And um, to, even today, which is pretty easy uh, sea state conditions. We still had some issues with it, but it's just something we're always working through. From a design perspective, I'm talking from the position of a, of a trimmer and, and a sailor, would you say that this design is maybe a little bit too extreme, that you have crossed the line too far? Possibly, I think, um, I mean, it's a really good question. It's a question all the teams are gonna have to answer of, you know, what what's gonna yield you the, the highest performance boat, but also it needs to be, easy enough from a sailing perspective to, to use well and race really well when it comes time to, to race and, and, and make maneuvers in tight spots. So, um, I mean, to be honest, I mean, we, I don't think we have a, a, a real answer on that. I think we're still learning every day with that foil and we're still getting better as a sailing team as well. So um, I wouldn't say we've gone too far, but um, but certainly that's that's the question that we're asking ourselves every day. And then looking at the comp components declaration form, I realize that you are still missing to test and to bring out uh, one more foil and one more flap. Uh, is that going to happen anytime soon? Yeah, the, I think the plan is to launch foiling four next week. So we'll have that online and um, we're looking forward to testing that foil and um, I hope it's our best foil, but uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll find out soon. Is it going in any design direction in particular? Um, compared to the other foils? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, you, I mean, you'll see next week, it, it's nothing crazy. It's just kind of, um, a continuation on, on, I mean, all three of our foils are relatively similar. And so it's just kind of continuation on that, on that design path. Andy Maloney, you were trimmer and flight controller, one of the two, on the boat today on the ETNZ AC75. It looked like a glorious day from where we were in the recon boat. Relatively flat water and about 15 knots of breeze. How did you see it? Yeah, it was another epic, epic day out here in Barcelona. Flat water, like you say, a nice building, southerly breeze, um, you know, just slowly going down the jib codes and, you know, just some really nice conditions to sail the boat in. We saw you work your way down, I think, from the J2 to the J4 today. Um, 
What are you learning about the crossover? Or do you guys already have that nailed down with this boat? Uh, we're always just checking in on that crossover, you know, but yeah, going through quite a few codes today with that building southerly and yeah, just enjoying being back out in the 75 and a bit more breeze and getting some higher boat speeds and just getting back dialed in. We saw yesterday in the lighter stuff with the big J1 up, um, the boat looked a little bit sticky. When you switch to the J2, it seems to be easier for you to take off, maybe a little more wind as well. Just talk about that transition between those two sails. Yeah, for sure. Like the, um, yeah, the both, both sails have a home um, and the light as you know, it's all about getting, getting the power and then trying to, you know, get rid of it for the speed. So yeah, we um, use a bit of both and that stuff. Today, the cyclos looked like they were working pretty hard. They rotated out a few times. Um, where's all that power going? What, what, what's it driving on the boat? Just for those people who don't know. Yeah, to all the, um, the aero functions, you know, they're controlling all the hydraulics that trim the mainsail, trim the jib, and, and the more they give us, the more we use, essentially. So um, they're working really hard out there. What's the communication like between you and the trimmers? Are they just head down and pedaling the whole time, or are there, are there times when you can kind of rein them in a little bit? Yeah, we're starting to learn the boat really well and the systems, you know, there's not too, too many comms that we need between us and the cyclers. Um, just more around the development and stuff of the system, just making sure that we keep progressing there. Andrea Teze, flight controller. Yeah, looked like a lot of breeze today. Andrea, can you break down the day for us? Yeah, it was really nice to get back on our prototype after a big block of uh, racing and training on the AC40. Today was awesome conditions here. We had a really strong sea breeze coming in. And yeah, it was nice to sail our uh, fast prototype around the Gulf again. Were you looking at some speed runs today? It certainly seemed like a lot of straight, sail straight line sailing. Yeah, for sure. We are uh, focusing quite a bit on straight line testing at the moment. We are getting close to some key decisions in our uh, big boat design. So yeah, at the moment we are looking uh, into the every bit of speed we can find and testing anything out of our foils. And, uh, of course, you, you might be working on your playbook. Uh, does that, in your position as a flight controller, involve also controlling rudder rake and pitch hands? I mean, we are playing around a lot with positions at the moment, so it's, the playbook is pretty flexible. We are able to manage from different positions a lot of the flight control. And uh, I know that in the last AC75, uh, there were some, there were, there was a delay in when, for example, activating the Kent board down, board up. Is there any delay in controls uh, right now for the for these wings? There is no delay on controls, but there is going to be delay on all the data and the numbers that are coming through the logging system. So yeah, all the true wind speed numbers, all the data coming from the wind, the uh, speed and position have a random delay in it, so you cannot use them live. Mm -hmm. Um, on your on your position, is it a full-time job? Well, when when you when they're when the guys not, are not flying on your appendage, uh, what what are you doing? <laughs> uh, when you're up, when we're not flying, we're flying the boat. We are uh, looking around, helping the helmsman, uh, checking all the performance parameters are working fine, and keeping the boat going fast. Basically, trimmers. <laughs> Andrea, un commento in italiano per i tifosi di rossa. Ma ha fatto splendida giornata qui nel Golfo di Cagliari, abbiamo avuto un paio di giorni di maestrale e adesso con questo grande scambio di temperatura sta entrando una brezza molto forte al pomeriggio e oggi è stato veramente uno spettacolo, abbiamo preso quasi 20 nodi, è bello tornare a allenarsi a casa e appunto sfruttare il nostro prototipo fino all'ultimo prima di iniziare a pensare alla barca grande.